Grace and peace be multiplied to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Happy Sabbath everyone. It is a joy and a privilege to gather in this manner again via technology. But there is a word from the Lord. There is a word from the Lord to you. And it is from the book of Luke. So if you have your Bibles, why don't you take it and turn with me to the book of Luke. Luke chapter 9. And I'll read just two verses, 57 and 58. That is Luke chapter 9, verse, eight, verse 57 and 58. It reads like this. As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and the birds of the here has nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Today, I would just like to share with you another subject entitled Living with Uncertainty. Living with Uncertainty. Let's just have a word of prayer before we continue. Father, we thank you so much. For your grace, your love, and your mercies. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we listen to a word from you, that you will speak to our hearts as we are truly living in uncertain times. We pray, O oh God, that we may find hope and encouragement from this, your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Living with uncertainty. I like to know what's going on. I, I like to be in the know. I want to have at least an idea of what is going to happen. Uh, to be honest, I hate it when I'm in a spot where I don't have sufficient insight or information about how things are going to unfold. I just don't like dealing with ambiguity. You know, that feeling of uneasiness because of my limited insight into a particular situation. And I believe I'm not the only one. I believe you too experience this every now and then. I can imagine that you too wrestle with the worries and woes that comes with wondering what's next. Confused about how you're going to bounce back from this season. Concern if each day the numbers of persons who are testing for coronavirus, will it, will it increase or will there be a decrease? When will this all be over? We today find ourselves daily dealing with the feeling of uncertainty, not knowing what's going to happen. Not knowing how things are going to unfold in this worldwide pandemic. And if we're brutally honest, none of us like dealing with the dread of wondering what's going to happen tomorrow. How are we going to handle this situation? We all desire clarity. We all want to know where the next provision is going to come from. And some may be wrestling with the question of how will I be able to continue pay the rent, the mortgage, when here it is that I'm laid off, I am home in isolation. What is going to happen? With so many things that are up in the air, we tend to be tense at times because we get overly concerned and worried about the unforeseen future. And it's like we're living in a season that is saturated with uncertainty. But I believe that in this season of global health crisis, that the word of the Lord for us today is to have faith in God amid seasons of uncertainty. In other words, 
Our daily walk with Jesus is not one that is free from uncertainty of how he's going to make a way, but to have faith amidst uncertainty, believing that he will make a way. It's for this reason I wonder how this individual in our text must have felt. You see, on a particular day, Jesus was with some of his disciples. Uh, scriptures say that there was an individual who showed great interest in wanting to follow Jesus. Not knowing that being a disciple of Christ is not a life which is free from rejection, persecution, and yes, uncertainty. The text says in Luke chapter 9 verse 57 that a certain individual, someone, uh, as they were going along the way, Jesus and his disciples, as they were going along the way, someone said, Master, I will follow you wherever you go. Let me give a little backdrop of what was going on before this individual shared this expression. You see, the Jews and the Samaritan had bitter relationships over many years. And it became very obvious when the Samaritans came to join in the rebuilding of the temple, as recorded in the book of Ezra, and the Jews rejected their help. Um, the scripture says in Ezra chapter 4, verse 4, that then the people around them, meaning the Samaritans, set out to discourage the people of Judah and make them afraid to go on building. In other words, when the Samaritans came to help the Jews, to rebuild the temple and the Jews rejected them, said, hey, listen, we'll take care of this on our own. The, the Samaritans began to frustrate the work. They became a thorn in their flesh, if you will. But when Jesus came on the scene, Jesus wanted to break down this racial barrier that exists. As a matter of fact, if you remember a story in John chapter 4, uh, the woman at the well, a woman of questionable reputation, but Jesus dialogued with this woman and this woman accepted Christ as the Messiah. She went back to her village and called the whole village, come see a man. And the entire Samaritan village believed that Jesus was the Messiah. But here in Luke chapter 9, uh, verses 51 to 56 thereabout, it mentioned of another group of Samaritan that Jesus went to this Samaritan village and they were going to receive him. But when they discovered that Jesus set his face to another place towards Jerusalem, they rejected him. In other words, if Jesus was going to stay with them and he didn't have any intention of going where the Jews were, they would have received him gladly for him to come and abide and to dwell with them and to share the good news of the gospel. But when they discovered that Jesus had intention to share the good news with the other nations also, the Samaritans, they rejected him. And it is out of this rejection, as Jesus and his disciples continued on the way, we have this individual who came upon the scene in verse 57, according to Luke, and said, I'll follow you wherever you go. And then Jesus said, listen, foxes have holes, birds of the air has nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. I believe this response from Jesus was to let this individual know that the call to discipleship is not a call to live a life of glamour and glitter. On the contrary, it is one of daily dependence and trust in the Father's provision and his protection. In other words, the foxes knew that they had a hole that they call home. So when they go out each day to fend and fetch food, they had somewhere that they call home that they would eventually end up. And the birds of the air, when they go out to look for worms or seeds, they knew that at a certain time, when it's getting dark, I have somewhere to nest. But Jesus was letting this man know, listen, preaching daily and traveling to different cities and towns, we don't know where we're going to stay. We don't have 
any arrangement in advance to stay with such and such an individual uh, at such and such a time. Jesus was letting this man know that the call to discipleship is a call to trust in the Father's provision, protection amidst uncertainty. The call for discipleship. In other words, when Jesus and his disciples traveled daily, they didn't know the where, the when, the what, and the how. What Jesus knew that his heavenly Father would supply all of his needs, all that he needed to carry on the work which he had come to do. So Jesus wanted this person to know on us that the call to discipleship is not one that is free from uncertainty of how God is going to make a way, but to have faith amidst uncertainty and to believe that God is going to make a way. Let me say it another way. What's important to know when we are dealing with uncertainty is that we can daily exercise faith in God's caring character and his competence to supply our needs. And this is what Paul was trying to let us know in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, when he said, And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. As a matter of fact, uh, Jesus himself in Matthew chapter 6 was speaking on things which we can get overly concerned about, such as what will we eat today and worry about tomorrow or the future. Uh, Jesus, while addressing these things in Luke chapter 6, he mentioned in verse 32 and 33, he said, Our heavenly Father, know that we have need of all these things. And then Jesus said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. To push this point further, as we think about this reality, we need to remember that our Heavenly Father has foreknowledge. He has all the foreknowledge, all the power, all the resources necessary to ensure that this will happen. And so I just want to encourage you today and to drive home the point that life is unpredictable. Life is filled with uncertainty. And unforeseen things regarding the future as well. But amidst this, we can have faith in our Heavenly Father that He will take care of us that He will supply our needs, that He will make a way for us. And it is in times like these, beloved friends, we need to remember that though we trust God to make a way for us, God doesn't necessarily always answer our requests. He doesn't necessarily always make a way for us how we expect it to. And I think this is why the, the hymn writer, Franny Crosby, uh, said these words as she, I believe, was reflecting on the Father's care and provision and protection. She said in one of her hymns, which is called, All the Way My Savior Leads, there's a line that Franny Crosby said, For I know whatever befalls me, Jesus doeth all things well. For I know whatever befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. In other words, Franny Crosby said, listen, I'm going to trust him to make a way for me. And even if he doesn't make the way how I expect or anticipate, I know at the end of the day, he makes all things well. But you know, church family, New Glasgow, Pogwash, and Shuro, and for those who are tuning in online. I believe that the one who lived a life with uncertainty to the greatest degree ever was Jesus himself. As a matter of fact, from birth till death, 
His life was filled with uncertainty. But amidst those uncertainty was trust and reliance on the Father's care. Remember when Jesus was born, his early parents, Joseph and Mary, they didn't have a place to stay. The scriptures say that all the inns were full. But God made provision in a manger. Do you see again the point that God will come through for us, but oftentimes he may not come through how we expect him to. Uh, there's a story in the scripture that tells us that one day Jesus was preaching and teaching the gospel. And thousands were listening. And the people were with him from morning till evening. Men, women, and children. And one of his disciples discovered that there wasn't much food to feed the people. So the disciples said, listen, where are we going to get food from to feed so many people? And to add, we are in a desolate place. And Jesus said, amidst this uncertainty, how many loaves have ye? How many fish? And with whatever they found among themselves, Jesus took it. Lifted up towards heaven, blessed it, broke it, and bestowed it unto the disciples to feed and to meet the needs of the people. While Jesus was hanging on that old rugged cross of suffering and shame, one writer said that Jesus had a great level of uncertainty when the woes, the worries, and the sins of this world was resting so heavily upon him. There was uncertainty while he was struggling on the cross under the weight of our sins. In the book called The Desire of Ages, page 500 uh, sorry, page 753, paragraph 2, this is what one writer says, Satan with his fiercest temptation wrung the heart of Jesus. The Savior could not see through the portals of the tomb. Hope did not present to him his coming forth from the grave as a conqueror or tell him of his father's acceptance of his sacrifice. In other words, the sin, our sins were so heavy upon him that Jesus was uncertain. But Jesus hung on that cross. He hung on that cross because he was trusting himself in the Father's care. And that's why when Jesus uttered some of the last words on the cross, one of them was, Father, into thine hand I commit my spirit. In other words, I am trusting in your care. Beloved friends, even in death there were uncertainty for Jesus. Remember when Jesus died, they didn't have a tomb to bury him in. There was uncertainty. Uh, Jesus was buried in a borrowed tomb. Uh, some preachers say that he didn't need a tomb because truly, um, he was only just going to stay there for three days. But it's just to show that Jesus' life was filled with uncertainty. But watch this, I believe. Uncertainty is the breeding ground for our faith. In other words, we shouldn't dwell on our uncertainties. But amidst uncertainty, it will cause us to rely on God to do what only He alone can do to turn our impossibilities into possibilities. Recently, my wife wanted some grocery. About a few days ago, maybe four or five days ago. And so she wrote a list on two uh, sticky note paper. She gave it to me and said, hey, listen, I'll go to the store. All of us don't have to go to the store under this coronavirus situation. So here it is that I roll up in the food store and I, you know, was shopping, putting groceries in, in the trolley, but I discovered all I had was just one piece of paper. I couldn't find the other piece of paper. Listen, 
I searched all over and I couldn't find it. I looked high and low and I couldn't find the paper. I was wandering now in the midst of this uncertainty and concern. Uh, what, what were some of the things that she, she said was on the list? I couldn't remember. Because in all honesty, while we were at home and she was writing out those um, grocery items, and you know, she was speaking out loud, I wasn't too paying much attention. So I couldn't remember, I couldn't remember. I was like, was it lime, was it lemon? I just couldn't remember. Uh, was it potato? And man, I was pacing literally back and forth, to and fro in that supermarket. And in the midst of that uncertainty, I said to myself, listen, I may be unclear, and what it is that I need, but I'm sure my wife has the answer. And so I called her and for sure she had the answer. She was the one who write them down in the first place. She wrote them in the first place. And so she told me over the phone and I got those items. What I learned from that, which I want to share with you again, to repeat it and to drive home this point, don't become overly concerned, overly anxious about tomorrow. Trust in the one who holds tomorrow in his hands. As the songwriter says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. We can have faith in God to make a way for us amidst uncertainty. So continue to trust in the Father's care and competence to supply your needs, to take care of you in the midst of this season where coronavirus is running rampant. And we are praying and asking God for a miracle, for him to intervene and to bring this deadly virus to an end. But until then, we can... Have faith amidst the uncertainty, knowing that God is still in charge. He's still in control. This didn't catch him by surprise. And so I appeal to you today to trust God. Trust him. Look to him. Uncertainties will exist, but don't dwell on them. Because when you dwell on them, it will cause you to become anxious and worry about things which you have no control over. So I invite you at this time to trust in God. Give him your cares and concerns. And as the Apostle Paul said in the book of Philippians, that in exchange, he will give you his peace, which passes all understanding. Paul says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, let your requests be known unto God. And in exchange, God will give you his peace, which surpasses all understanding. And that peace will guard your heart and mind. Philippians chapter 4. The Apostle Paul uttered those words in verses 6, 7, and 8, I think. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for your grace, your love, and your kindness. We are so grateful, Father, that we can have faith in you amidst uncertainty. And so, Lord, we pray that as we continue to look unto you from whence our help comes from, may you give us your peace in exchange. Lord, we are relying on you. The whole world is relying on you to intervene divinely as we are under the pressure of this deadly virus. Lord, bring us through. We thank you for the confidence we have in your presence, your protection, your provision, and your promise. We claim your promises, dear Father. We claim what Jesus said, Lo, I am with you always, even until the end. We thank you, O God. Continue to keep us in your will, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.